Ice up. Ice what? Whoa, whoa, baby. Poke it out. Poke it out. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So before I get into this, and I know I probably already did a, an intro and sound like an idiot repeating myself, go ahead and do me a favor and click that subscribe button, boys. We've been doing great with growth here recently, so if you're new to the channel, go ahead, click that subscribe button. No need to be shy. Stick around. We're all community. We talk to each other. We do all that cool stuff, so go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Do what, do what you must. I'll see you boys in this video actually what's up everybody welcome back to the channel and I have just pretty much accepted that I'm going to be a microphone in the hand kind of dude from this point out the boom arm just wasn't working for me I didn't like it adjusting it pissed me off so here we are we're freehanding it today we're going to be doing the New Orleans Saints versus the Atlanta Falcons week 11 matchups to watch because yes it is somehow already week 11 that makes no sense to me either I know you guys are just as shocked as to how the hell this season is moving by so fast but good god it's already week 11 we're playing our first matchups with the we're the first matchup with uh the Atlanta Falcons having another one in just two weeks time from now after we play the Denver Broncos so it's kind of ridiculous that it's scheduled so quickly because one of these is almost guaranteed to be a loss. Hopefully, it's not the one at home. Hopefully, we sweep Atlanta. I don't know. I'm just a fake sports analyst. So, we're going to get in today's, into, into today's video. It's going to be a pretty interesting one. Um, they're not going to be the, the most common matchups because there's been a lot of shit that has hit the fan in this last couple of week period, time period, period. I don't understand why I do this. I'm so bad at talking. But yeah, we're doing the Saints Week 11 matchups to watch versus the Atlanta Falcons. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into this. Now, the first matchup I want to talk about is Jameis Winston. Famous Jameis versus the Atlanta Falcons secondary. Here you have Jameis Winston, who is a jack of all trades. He can throw 30 touchdowns. He can throw 5,000 yards. He can throw 30 interceptions at will. He can do whatever he wants at any time he wants to do it. He can seriously be so good, but, but so bad at the same time. But... I do feel as if his 30 interception total last season is really overblown. Like, I understand the significance of it. If you throw 30 interceptions in any scenario, it's bad. But when you throw, have to throw the ball 626 times in one season and have one of the worst offensive lines in the league and your running game sucks butthole so you have literally nothing to lean on, you're going to be more prone to throwing interceptions. They they asked this dude to throw the ball almost 700 times last year. And everybody's so shocked that my man threw 30 interceptions. Leave him alone, man. He has a lot to prove here. Not to mention, that was Jameis Winston's first year under Bruce Arian's system. Now, before you get, you sit here and say, dude, it's just a system. It's not going to make him throw, throw interceptions. Let's go ahead and talk about the last time a great quarterback played in, in Bruce Arian's system. We got Carson Palmer for our example here. I know this has been said a million times, but those who haven't heard it, open your ears, man. So, so... Carson Palmer's first year under Bruce Arians, 24 touchdowns, 22 interceptions. That was his first year. He threw 24 touchdowns and 22 interceptions. But the thing with Bruce Arians' system is you get better over time in it. You get used to the playbook because it's extremely deep. You get you get better equipped to do those risky plays that Bruce asks of you. So in, in, in Carson Palmer's second year, he had 11 touchdowns and three interceptions through six games. Then in his third year, had 35 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. The thing is, Jameis Winston never got that chance. His first year in Bruce Arian systems, in Bruce Arian system, his interception total was higher than usual. He got booted. And they picked up Tom Brady to replace him, who has thrown five interceptions against the Saints, seven on the year so far, and could be throwing a little bit more, which is pretty high for Brady. So it, it says a little bit here, you know? The reason for this is Bruce Arian System's complexity. There was so much that goes into it. There's so much risk you have to take, dude. Jameis Winston was dealt a horrific hand, a horrific hand and, and was set up to fail in this situation, in my opinion. Now... In 2020, you have a Jameis Winston who was capable of throwing 5,000 yards and 30 touchdowns who has sat 10 games behind all-time great veteran quarterback Drew Brees being mentored every step of the way, cutting up in the locker room and informing relationships and serious chemistry with our players. I feel like he'll be just fine. He can be just fine. 
Jameis will likely start this game against a familiar foe, who he has a 4-5 and five record against in, in, over his career, even though his stat line against the Falcons shows a 66% completion percentage, 25 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. He is still... 4-5 and five against this team because of how historically awful the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were in that Jameis Winston era. He gets a lucky start here against Atlanta, in my opinion, who has not had the best defense in the league and hasn't had a top 25 defense in that regard either, in all honesty. Uh, Atlanta has the 31st overall ranked pass defense in the entirety of the NFL, which is only one away from being the literal bottom, allowing 310 passing yards per game. But over the last three games, the Atlanta Falcons have won all three of them. They've tightened up in the secondary. They've only allowed 260 yards passing per contest, even though they faced the lowly Detroit Lions, Teddy Bridgewater, who isn't a yardage guy, and Drew Locke, who literally sucks ass. He's shit juice. It's still impressive to see them improve by 50 passing yards per game in, in a snap like that. I'm impressed by Atlanta. This game 100% comes down to Jameis Winston. If he can't perform, that high-powered offense for the Atlanta Falcons will put up points. I mean, I'm not saying they're going to drop 30 on us, but they will put up points. And if we can't keep up, we're going to lose. So, Jameis Winston, a lot of this game rests on your shoulders, pal. Um, I'm hoping to see you succeed against a lousy pass defense. I'm hoping Atlanta has another bad day defensively. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the next matchup to watch. The next matchup we have to watch here is Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray versus the Falcons' run defense. So the Falcons' run defense has been statistically actually really good this year, but I almost expect that it's mainly because of the fact that teams kind of just say, you know what? We don't have to run against the Falcons. They have one of the worst pass defenses in the league. Why the hell would we sit here wasting time running the ball? It, it, it almost seems as if that's the case. And also in three separate games, the Atlanta Falcons blew a 16-plus point lead, which they had a 99% win probability in all three of those games. So they were playing, the other team was playing catch-up and throwing the ball. So there are a lot of reasons why I don't trust the Atlanta Falcons' run defense being as good statistically as it is. The reason I say that is the Atlanta Falcons are allowing 99.7 rushing yards per game, which is actually the sixth lowest in the league. Congrats to them, but they have some stiff competition coming to town. Alvin Kamara, who is currently the league leader in all-purpose yards, will definitely play a big role this week as Jameis Winston is likely getting the start. He, was, he has definitely been our best offensive piece this year, having 104 carries on the ground for 486 yards and 7 rushing touchdowns. On top of that, he's also had 648 receiving yards, which is or 600, yeah, 648 receiving yards and, two, and 4 receiving touchdowns, which is insane as well. That brings his touchdown total on the year to 11. Absolutely insane by Alvin Kamara. I'm genuinely impressed. And he also has a counterpart. That's Latavius Murray. He's been a bruiser, having 90 rushing attempts for 378 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns, averaging 4.2 yards per carry. The Falcons' defense will have to be stout in this category if they want to win this game because the Saints will 100%, without a doubt, run the ball. We were extremely run heavy against um, when we had Teddy Bridgewater in the lineup, and I expect the same thing from the Saints here. Run heavy, open up the play action, open up down, uh, make them respect the run, open up downfield, let Jameis throw the ball that's how I feel like this game plan is going to be for this offense now let's go ahead and move to our final matchup to watch which is the only defensive one we have on this list and that is Marshawn Lattimore versus Julio Jones who what else was I gonna say here really this this is this has to be one right Julio hasn't scored a touchdown against the Saints since Marshawn Lattimore joined the league in 2017 sounds like some someone else I know Mike Evans who hasn't caught a pass against Marshawn Lattimore since 2018 I'm, I'm not sure here which is insane but Lattimore might not be playing because of an oblique injury I don't know the severity of it it didn't look like a, a bad injury uh, if you watch the play he got hurt he kind of just ah and walked off the sideline it didn't look anything crazy uh, he sat out and watched the rest of the game it really looked like a precautionary measure more than anything um, but it'll be great to watch if Marshawn Lattimore does step on the field as Marshawn had another zero yard and zero reception allowed day against Mike Evans last time we played the Buccaneers and did it in week one as well. So it's uncertain what will happen if Marshawn Lattimore does play in this matchup. Julio Jones usually rips off a ton of yardage against Marshawn, but can never punch the ball in. Will Marshawn lock him up? Well, let's find out. 
Julio Jones has 43 receptions for 638 yards and three touchdowns on the year. So hopefully Laddie can keep him in check. That's definitely one thing that we need to do if we want to win this game because good God, that Atlanta Falcons uh, pass offense is extremely high powered. That'll be the end of today's video though, boys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate the hell out of each and every single one of you. Let me know down in the comment section below if you liked the additions I put in this video. Uh, a little bit more of editing prowess went into this one, so I hope you guys appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Do all that fancy stuff, and I'll see you boys in the next one. Adios. Zero crowd.